We're going to install a Yamaha lift kit. This card is a G16. The front lift is the same for a G2, the whole way up into a G20. So you can see we already got the uh, wheels and tires off. And then the first step you want to do is remove the bolts holding the stock bumper. And then remove the bumper from the car. Remove the cotter pins on your inner A-arm bolts, both the front and the back and then using a 14 millimeter wrench and socket loosen the front and back A-arm bolts. You're going to want to save these bolts and cotter pins for installation of the new A-arms. Remove the stock cotter pins from the steering arm bolts then using a 14 millimeter wrench and ratchet remove the two bolts that are holding the stock steering arm to the spindle. We're supplying you with new bolts but you do want to save the nuts for installation of our steering risers. Lift the steering arm from the spindle and now using a punch you can see here is your roll pin. Using a punch push the roll pin out of the spindle which will allow you to remove your king pin. Now you want to save the king pin and the roll pin for reinstallation. Using a 14 millimeter wrench and ratchet remove the bottom shock bolt from the A-arm. Save the bolt and nut for reinstallation and now you can remove the A-arm from the car. The next step is to install the driver side A-arm to the stock A-arm location using the stock bolts, nuts, and cotter pins securely tighten to the front mount and rear mount of the car. The next step is installing the shock to the shock mount. There's different holes for different camber. For the G8, 14, 16, 19, and 20 we recommend the next to the top hole for the G2 and G9 you come down one hole towards the wheel and then securely tighten. Now you want to take and install the stock spindle to the car using the stock kingpin. As you can see your A-arms come with new bushings. And once you get the spindle installed Look for the hole and reinstall your split roll pin. Now it's always a good idea to clean and lubricate your king pin before you install it to the, uh, to the spindle to the car. The next step we're going to do is installing the steering riser to the car. As you can see there's a notch machined into the steering riser and that notch goes towards the inside and the front of the car. So the steering riser sits on the stock spindle and using the supplied metric bolts bolt your steering arm and riser to the spindle using the stock nuts and cotter pins. The reason we do this is to raise your steering to give you the proper steering geometry now that your car is lifted. Securely tighten the bolts. Now that you got the driver's side done, double check all your bolts, make sure they're securely tightened and all your cotter pins are reinstalled. Perform the same steps to the passenger side. Once the passenger side is done, using the stock bolts, reinstall the stock bumper to the front of the car. Now what we want to show you is how you adjust the toe in on a Yamaha. Uh, once the lift is done and you have the wheels and tires on it, you're going to want somebody to stand in front of the car about 25 to 30 feet and have them drive towards you and look at your front end alignment. I want to show you how you adjust the front end and it's easier to show you now that the wheels and tires are off the car. This here is your tie rod. 
There's a driver side and a passenger side tie rod, and there's jam nuts on each end. You're going to loosen the jam nuts. and then place an adjustable wrench on the slot of the tie rod. Now the tie rod's threaded, so the further you run the tie rod out, the more it's going to bring the front of the tire in. When you run the tie rod in towards the center of the car, it's going to bring the front of the tire out. Once you have proper alignment achieved, the toe is what we're talking about, should be one eighth to one quarter inch toed in in the front. That means the front portion of the front tires should be an eighth to a quarter inch closer than the rear portion of the front tires. But you have to drive the car and look at what the toe setting and the alignment is like and then make the proper adjustments according to what you see. Once you have the alignment set, retighten the jam nuts and you're ready to go. Now it's time to move to the rear lift. As you can see, we got the car on a lift, but what you want to do is, uh, if you don't have a lift available, put the car on jack stands, and then take a regular car jack and then put it underneath the rear differential on the rear end because we're going to be dropping the rear. We're going to be dropping the rear end, so you want to relocate your choke cable Unattach the choke cable from the body and just let it hang under the seat for right now. Roughly two inches below the stock hole, you want to drill a new hole for your choke mount. We're using a unibit. Uh, you're probably going to have to use a hole saw if you don't have a unibit. And then reconnect your choke cable. to the new hole. We're going to move to a project car we have sitting here that has the body off just to show you how the rear goal post gets installed. It's easier to see with the body off. You don't have to take the body off the car to install the lift, but it does make it a little easier. Using a 14 millimeter wrench and ratchet, I want to remove the top stock shock mount bolts from both the driver and passenger side of the car. Now that you got the bolts removed from the top, using the car jack will allow you to drop the rear, which is going to allow us to install the rear risers to the top stock shock mount location. The next step is to install the rear goal post to the car. As you can see, there's a J machine right in the center of the channel. This goes towards the rear of the car. And you just take the new rear goal post or riser and put it up into the stock shock mount location and bolt to the car using the supplied bolts in the kit. Now that the rear goal post is installed, Install the top of the stock shock to the new shock mount location using the stock bolts as shown. Securely tighten, do both the driver and passenger side, and you're ready to move to the sway bar mount. The next step is installing our sway bar mount. To do this, use a 17 millimeter wrench and ratchet and remove the bolt holding the stock sway bar to the car. Using a 10 millimeter ratchet and wrench, remove the stock bagwell liner bolt from the car as shown. Using a 3 8 inch drill bit, you want to enlarge this hole down through the bagwell and through the frame. This will allow us to attach our sway bar mount. Using the supplied 3 8 by 2 and a half inch bolt, washer, and lock nut, install the sway bar mount to the enlarged stock hole of the frame. Make sure
sure the sway bar mount is flat against the frame and using the half by one supply bolt and three quarter inch ratchet and wrenches. Secure the sway bar mount. to tighten the bagwell bolt and then install the stock sway bar to the bottom of the sway bar mount using the stock bolt as shown. Securely tighten all bolts and the rear of the lift kit is done. Now you got your lift kit installed and you're ready to go off-roading and if you do go off-roading you can see that the rear differential is exposed. If, it hits, if you hit it with a rock you, know, you can severely damage the cart. We highly recommend installing a skid plate that we make it's, which would protect that rear end housing and save the life of your car. That skid plate is part number 6273.